to each and every one. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're rejoicing and we're being glad in it. We thank God for each and every one of you who are tuned in uh, with us live, hated for service at First United Methodist Church, and those of you who have um, tuned in uh, since the uh, live recording of this service. Truly, God is here, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We thank God for, for you and what God has in store for each and every one of us. Let us pray. Let's invite the presence of God in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, truly, this is your day that you've made. We're rejoicing. We're glad in your salvation, Lord, that you have given unto us. Thank you for this time, Lord, to be found, Lord, in your house, Lord. Those of us who are here with those, Lord, who are... Lord, tuned in with us, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, through through the internet, Lord, to worship and to glorify your name in their, in their respective places this morning. Lord, we pray for your blessing on this service, Lord, and your word that will come forth to you, God. Strengthen and encourage our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite us to turn to our hymn, hymn number 328, or to your bulletin that was shared online. As we sing, offer songs, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. We trust that you're sensing, sensing His presence in your hearts and lives today.
back. So glad, so glad to be here this morning and worshiping with you. Uh, I think the music comes across a lot better when we do it this way. So we're so thankful for Miss Jeanette being here once again. And I'm thankful for Miriam and Dave and Pastor Trevor being here and Jeanette being here. I mean, uh, Jackie being here. And Eddie's up in the crow's nest recording this. So uh, we're well under our 10 limit. And uh, we're here to praise God and to bring worship to everyone. Amen. Amen. Uh, just to give a few announcements, we're closed for another week. Uh, we're taking it week by week. And so we will be closed for another week. Um, we are checking the mail. Uh, we are getting uh, offering checks that come in. And once a week, they are being counted and deposited. And so we thank you for that. Uh, we're also trying to keep up. Uh, Jackie and I are working uh, our regular hours from home. Uh, and Pastor Trevor as well. And uh, we are trying to keep up with everybody with phone calls and emails and, and social media and any other contacts. I would encourage you to join us for our check-ins. Uh, Monday, Thursday, and Friday night at 7 o'clock, we do a check-in on Zoom. I've sent out the uh, Zoom information for you to contact us, and you can do so just by making a phone call. You don't have to have a smartphone or a computer. And then we also are doing Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Bible study, and we're in the Gospel of Luke. We're also doing Wednesday night prayer meeting at 7 o'clock. So Monday through Friday, we're connecting at 7 o'clock on Zoom. If you need that information, text me, email me, do something, get a hold of me, and I'll make sure you get it. Uh, then Sundays, we're going to be live here on Facebook, and we're also going to do a YouTube service, uh, recording rather. And then also at 1 o'clock, we're doing our Sunday school class on Zoom. Same Zoom address for all the 7 o'clock and the 1 o'clock on Sunday. And we hope that you join us. Amen. Uh, we, had, uh, we were going to try to do some testimonies, uh, and uh, I forgot to announce early in the service that we are taking uh, requests on the Facebook page. I've been watching it. I don't see any testimonies going up. Uh, but I would like to lift a few prayer concerns. And uh, Nancy was in the hospital, uh, but she is now home. And I'm going to try only to use first names uh, because we are live and on uh, the social media. So Nancy was in the hospital. She is now home. Uh, we need to keep uh, rolling in our prayers as he continues in rehab. Uh, we have our seniors. We've been trying to keep tabs with them. Uh, no one that we know of is sick or in the hospital. Uh, Art is in the hospital. And Art had his surgery on Friday, and it all came out well. And the surgeries, uh, surgeons are happy. And he's going to have to have about a two-week hospital stay, Art said, unless he heals quicker. So our prayer for Art now is for fast recovery from his surgery. We need to keep uh, Bill Davis, uh, I'm using the last name, we need to keep Bill in our prayers. Uh, he's in rehab as well. His name just popped up on my uh, iPad, and that's why I said it. I'm sorry. Uh, but we need to keep one another in our prayers. We need to keep in touch with one another. This is a difficult time for everyone. Uh, some people are still going to work. Some people are telecommuting to work. But some people are home. And so we need to pray for the marriages uh, that have both husband and wife at home 24-7. Amen? Amen? My wife and I love each other, but uh, uh, she had to leave the house the other day. I don't know why. I think it was just to get some fresh air. Uh, but she left the house and went over to the Grands. Uh, so uh, but she's been pretty much isolated. Uh, I've been going out a few times uh, and uh, going to grocery shopping, things of that nature. But keep our uh, marriages in your prayers. Um, I will be doing a Zoom marriage counseling for anybody who needs it. Uh, it'll be a private session, just the three of us. So uh, anybody who needs that, let me know. I'm half truthful and half kidding. All right. Very good. Um, we need to continue to pray for one another during this difficult time. I see Michael just said amen. I think it was to the uh, uh, tough times uh, with 24-7. We'll see. All right. So we're going to take some time of prayer, um, and uh, then we're going to share the word of God. So let's, uh, let's be in prayer together. 
Lord, we thank you for yet another day. We thank you that um, Art came through his surgery as well. We have been worried about Art, and we pray that he is on the road now to complete recovery. Uh, we pray for him as he uh, battles for health and strength. And we pray for him and others who are in rehabs or hospitals by themselves, no family able to join them. It's a difficult time. We thank you for our medical field, our doctors and nurses and caregivers, our, our first responders. Uh, we pray for them. We pray for our law enforcement. Uh, we pray, Lord, for those who are still out there grinding each day to serve us. We thank you for those that are dealing with uh, family. And we thank you for those who now love their teachers uh, because uh, they are learning what it's like to have your children, our children, uh, for those many hours. We pray for our teachers as they're doing the online learning now. And we pray that whether it's this year or next year, our children will be back in your care to learn and grow and mature in knowledge and in life. We pray for those parents who are uh, needing to decide uh, who will teach and who will nurture and who will work and all those decisions that many generations ago uh, did. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would help them in their daily process. We thank you, Lord, for Just the, the health that you give us. And, uh, the death totals are, are rising, but the percentages are, I won't say meaningless, because they're not meaningless. Any life is alive, but they are low, and most of us are healthy, and most of us are strong, and, and we pray for that. We pray to continue with that, but we pray also for those who are losing loved ones, and the loved ones themselves. Pray, Lord, that uh, with wise counsel, uh, the president and the governor will continue to do their work here in the state of Maryland. We pray for our president and our Congress, and we pray for all our governors and all of our leaders and community leaders who are making decisions about slowly, slowly, with caution, opening up our economy, our country. Pray for healing. Pray for one another. Lord, bless us this day as we continue to worship. We'll be sure to give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask Dave if he would come and pray for me this morning. I'll step aside a little bit. You can stand there and pray. challenging time right now, Father, but uh, we know the final outcome, Father. You will have victory in this, Father. And, uh, Father, it's just a blessing to be here, uh, to give you praise and worship. And, Father, I just now ask that you fill Pastor up with the Holy Spirit. Uh, give him the message that you want us to receive. And, Father, help to transition all of us into this time of worship, and not only be receptive with our ears, but carry the message in our heart. And, and, and deliver this message throughout our community, our nation, and the world. And Father, we pray all this in your precious Son's name. Amen. Amen. I would ask that if you are watching on Facebook Live, that you start a watch party if you haven't already, uh, so that your friends can also tune in uh, to our worship this morning. Uh, that should be as simple as hitting a little button that says watch party. So I uh, hope that you can do that. So the title of the message this morning is Post-Resurrection Appearance. A post-resurrection appearance. Last Sunday was Easter and we celebrated the resurrection. And the resurrection is essential uh, to our faith. Uh, the fact that Jesus rose from the grave is a, a key element in Christianity. The proof of his resurrection pops off the pages of the biblical stories. 
Today we continue with John's narrative, uh, John's account. Uh, some of his disciples, after the resurrection and after uh, John said they believed but they didn't understand, uh, they went back to their day jobs, or at least they were, they were fishing. They experienced the resurrection, but they didn't fully understand. And so in a sense, they returned to life as normal or usual. I'm sort of hoping that when this pandemic is over, uh, we don't return to life as normal. I pray that we've learned some things. Uh, I know that the environment has improved over the last uh, two months. I know that uh, many people have learned that they can telecommute, and many bosses uh, have learned that their employees can do almost as good, if not better, from home. So I pray that there's less traffic and there's less congestion and, and that there's more home time. I hope when the pandemic is over we have a new norm. Not the same old, same old. Have we spent any time thinking about what the new norm will look like? I saw the picture of a pride of lions laying in the road in a safari, napping, because there was no one coming through. They just were relaxing. Well, John records a post-resurrection story for us this morning. If you have your Bibles, you might want to open them to John chapter 21. And we're going to break it down a little bit, but we're going to go through uh, several verses of the 21st chapter. The disciples experienced the resurrection, yet they seemed to go back to life. They, at least they went fishing. And John 21, 1-3 records, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples. He had appeared a number of times. By the Sea of Galilee, it, it happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got in the boat. That night they caught nothing. Just a day out with the boys, I guess, fishing and trading stories. I remember spending some time with my brother and my father hunting, shooting the breeze afterward, talking about our stories. Still to this day, I'll call my brother, or he'll call me when he uh, gets a deer, and he'll recant the story of how the deer came in to his area. Telling the stories of the hunt. Do you remember times spent with loved ones before the pandemic? And maybe even during the pandemic. My wife got to spend some time with the grands. She got hugs and heard stories. And I'm envious because I haven't had the time to be able because I've been out so much. I want to make sure I keep my distance. John 21, verse 4 to 6, early in the morning. They must have done a lot of things early in the morning. The resurrection was early in the morning before dawn. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples who were out in the boat fishing, did not realize that it was Jesus. Maybe they were even on their way in. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Now these were all experienced fishermen. And they didn't know who that was on the shore. But he was yelling out instructions. And when they did, when they cast their net on the right side of the boat, they were unable to haul the net in because of a large number of fish that they had caught. My dad always seemed to know uh, what side of the tree the squirrel would be on. We used to love squirrel hunting together. 
He would always sit me down as a young teenager, and he would say, now you watch that tree right there. Now maybe he saw the squirrel already, and he was just going to move around the tree, and the squirrel would move to be away from him, and, and, and it would show up on my side of the tree. I, I don't know. But he would put me in the right place at the right time to have a shot at that squirrel. My brother's like that with deer. He, he seems to know what time of day and where they're going to be. Jesus told experienced fishermen where to find fish. And they caught more than they ever did. The wonder. I wonder if we were more in tune with our Lord. If our Lord might tell us some things in our life, I bet you he would. John 21, 7 to 8 says, then, then the disciple whom Jesus loved, and we know that's John, and he's the one writing the story. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. So not only is John faster than Peter, we noticed that last week in the resurrection story, but he's got better eyesight. Because he recognized Jesus first, and he made sure he told us that. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved us said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, pulled it up and wrapped it around him before he had, before he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. John was so excited to see Jesus, he, he shouted, it's the Lord! Wouldn't we be if we saw a loved one? Especially a loved one who had passed. I mean, if I saw my father or my mother, I would, I would be so excited. It, it's dad, it's mom! Jesus had been crucified, dead and buried. And they had experienced the resurrection, and Jesus had appeared to them, but they believed, but weren't quite convinced. I know I will be excited when this pandemic is over. I, I even asked people, what will be the first thing you'll do after the pandemic? And most people said, visit my kids and my grandkids and hug them. We're finding out what's really important, aren't we? Someone told me this the other day, and I thought it was meaningful. Um, the way you feel right now, isolated and, and alone in your home, is how some of our parents or grandparents or those in nursing homes feel when no one visits them. Think about that. Dave is here today, and he mentioned going down to visit with his dad. I like it when people tell me they visit their parents often or their grandparents. I remember it, it felt like a chore to visit my hundred and some year old great grandfather, uh, but I should have done it more. And I think we should remember from this pandemic, one of the lessons learned is that we need to visit with our loved ones more often. When Peter understood that it was Jesus, he entered the water fully clothed. Nothing else mattered more than seeing Jesus, and, and Peter went straight to him. I don't know if he swam to shore a hundred yards or whether it was shallow enough for him to wade in, but he got in the water and went to Jesus. We shouldn't let anything come between us and Jesus, amen? We shouldn't let anything come between us and Jesus. Not our jobs, not our hobbies, not even our families should come between us and Jesus. We've all heard this, right? Love the Lord our God with all our mind, soul, body, and strength. Everything that we have. John 21, 9-12. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. So they had fish they were catching, but Jesus somehow had already caught some fish, and he had them there on a spit, on a fire. 
waiting for them. So Jesus said to them, bring some of your fish that you have caught. Multiply what was there. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, not minnows, not small fish, large fish. John even tells us how many. They must have counted them, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Breakfast is my favorite meal. I could have breakfast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Eggs and bacon, pancakes, waffles, sausage. I'm getting hungry. How about you? Come and have breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. That's, that sounds a little squirrely there. They don't dare ask, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Theologically, this post-resurrection appearance is, is very important. As a post-resurrection appearance, John makes it clear that Jesus rose. This is not a ghost. The first time he met them, he told them, touch my hands and my side. A ghost doesn't have a body. And here he has breakfast with them. He eats. He cooks and eats with his disciples. He was resurrected. John 21, 13 and 14. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them. It's almost like communion. He took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time, John says, that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. John reports that this is his third post-resurrection appearance. He took bread and fish and shared them with his disciples. A ghost doesn't do that. Theologically significant. Surely Jesus died. The proof is in the gospel. Surely Jesus rose from the dead. A resurrection, not a resuscitation. He didn't get revived. He was dead and buried. And on the third day, he arose. Raised from the dead. Jesus is alive. During this pandemic, has Jesus become more alive in your life? Are you spending more time not watching Andy Griffith? You know, I actually turned that off the other day. You can only watch it so many times. When you start telling all the stories that the all the words that the characters are going to say, you've seen it enough. Have you been spending more time with Jesus? More time in the Word? More time in your devotions? More time in prayer? More time with your family? Uh, building up the faith. Jeanette was talking about her family and how they had a special time just the other day time in the Lord, remembering their faith and their baptism and, and, and reveling in each other and in their Lord. Jesus is alive. We celebrate and worship a risen Savior. He is in the world today. Amen and amen and amen. Today, before we close with some more music, I want to give you a challenge, and the challenge is to find more time. Yeah, that's a crazy challenge for a pandemic, right? Find more time. Find more time to spend with your loved ones, whether it's through social media, phone calls, or whether it's seeing one another. Find more time to be with Jesus. Let this be a time of building up the body and spirit and emotion. Don't let it be a time that Satan tears us down. Let us be built up. So my prayer for you, and I pray your prayer for me, is that during this pandemic we will actually be built up. We will come out of this strong.
longer. It's, it's sort of like uh, an athlete who has an injury and can't play the game, uh, but they do rehab and they come back stronger. Some of the guys, some of the pitchers that have had the Tommy John surgery have come back actually throwing better and faster because of the time spent away from the game and spent in building up the body. Just imagine if we were able to build up our spirit in a similar way during this pandemic and come out as men and women of God, giants in the faith, prayer warriors because of the time we spent on our knees during the pandemic. That's my challenge and my prayer for you as we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Amen. Pastor Trevor and Ms. Jeanette and others will lead us now as we have our sending songs. Amen. We thank God for the, the eyewitnesses of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, the promise that we have that He is alive and that's the, the foundation of our faith that we continue to stand on that promise of Jesus Christ. Our risen Savior. In number three, seven, four, standing on the promises of God. Thank you. 
have CCL license 1538599, and hopefully that will allow us then to broadcast those songs from our hymnal. Um, we pray that you enjoyed the service. Uh, we had uh, a good time bringing it to you. Uh, we hope and pray that we'll be back together soon. Uh, and I think it's going to be a joyous time. I can't wait for this place to be packed. We may have uh, one service or two services or four services to spread everybody out. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to have a great time when we get back together. Uh, but we're here now and able to be together in this technological world. And we're so grateful for that. Remember, 1 o'clock today, uh, we will be doing a Sunday school class. Uh, then all week, Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock, we've got uh, some contact on Zoom, the Bible study on Tuesday night, prayer time on Wednesday night. We hope to see you there. More and more of us should take advantage of this opportunity to connect. You don't have to have a computer. You can call in the phone number that I sent you. And uh, Pastor Trevor did that on the way home from Baltimore the other night. Uh, he called in with his cell phone and was able to join us. So it is, it is doable. God bless you. May God keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you is our prayer. Amen, amen, and amen.